Hi folks, welcome to the lesson on radians, arc length, and sector area. This is really stuff that we covered last year, so you might consider this lesson to be optional or just jogging your memory. Radian measure, we've been using it for all the previous videos, so you know, hopefully it's going okay. But it's an alternate angle measure system used in higher mathematics. We often consider it the natural angle measurement system. A radian is an angle that subtends an arc, or a pie crust essentially, the same size as the radius of its circle. So essentially what it's doing is it's taking some angle like that, and whatever angle gives you a pie crust length here that is the same as the radius of the circle, now I think I've probably made it a little bit on the small side, there we go, then that is what one radian is defined as. And it turns out it doesn't matter how big or small you make your circle, that angle will always be the same. It is roughly 57.3 degrees, but the exact conversion is that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So from here on out, if you see degrees, you're in degree measure. If you don't see degrees, we're in radian measure, and that's been the case all throughout this chapter. To convert to radians, you'll times by pi over 180, just as a conversion factor, because you want to get rid of degrees. And to convert to degrees, you'll times by 180 over pi, because you want to create degrees. I think it's important to know some common angles. So we already said that pi is 180. That means pi over 2, or half a pi, would be 90 degrees. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Pi over 4 is a quarter of 180, so that's 45 degrees. And pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Of course, there are infinitely many angles in both degrees and radians, but these are some ones that we'll see a lot of. So we might want to be able to convert measurement systems. Uh, and there are sort of two common ways you can do it. You could use a conversion factor. So this one's in degrees. We want to get it in radians. So I'm going to times by 180 over, uh, pi over 180, rather. That would give me, the degrees would divide out and get 60 pi over 180, which I could reduce down to 16 pi over 18. Those are both even, so I could reduce it further to uh, 3 pi over 9. Oh, those are both divisible by 3 pi over 3. What might be slicker, though, would be to just say, oh, that's one of my common angles. So it's pi over 3. Or in other words, 60 degrees is 1 third of 180. So in radians, of course, it's pi over 3. Same token here. We could times by pi over 180, and we'll have to reduce down. But I think what's slicker, especially when we have common angles like this, is to say, OK, that's like negative 2 60 degree angles, or negative 2 pi over 3s, or negative 2 pi over 3. Same thing the other way around. We could use a conversion factor. So this is going to work out for us. But it may be kind of painful to get us there. We'd go maybe that this 900 pi's will divide out. 900 divided by 4, which would be 450 over 2, which would be 225. And that's in degrees now. I think what's slicker, though, would be to say, that's 5 pi over 4's. Oh my, that means that is 5 45 degreeses. So 5 45 is 225. Similarly, for the next one, we can use a conversion factor, or we can say that's just 7 30 degree angles. So it's 210. If we don't have a common angle, or not one that works out nicely, that's when we, for sure, have to use a conversion factor. So here, the degrees will divide out, and we get 23 pi over 180. That's the exact measure of 23 degrees in radians. We can also get a decimal approximation. I type in 23 pi divided by 180, and I get roughly 0.401. You might be worried at this point, should I be in degrees or radians? Unless we're touching one of the trig functions, sine, cosine, or tangent, or their inverses, then it doesn't matter at all. So roughly 0.401. Now 
And that makes sense. Angles and radians are smaller numbers than angles and degrees. F is tricky. You might be saying, oh, is that 4 degrees or 4 radians? It has nothing to do with the pi's. There is no degree sign, so this means 4 radians. So let's put it in degrees. It would be exactly 720 degrees over pi, or 720 over pi degrees, which could be roughly 229 degrees. So there's some, con some conversion stuff. Um, we're probably always going to be a little more comfortable in degrees than we are in radians, but the more we use them, the more comfortable we'll be. That leads us to stuff about arc length and sectors and chords and segments. So we defined a radian as an arc that is, or an angle that creates an arc that is equal to the radius of the circle. This is taken straight from page 511 because I think it's, it's a pretty good uh, explanation of what's going on. An arc is just a pi crest, okay? And it can be formed by some angle theta. A sector is typically uh, an area region of it, so you could think of it as a slice. If that slice is less than half the whole pi, then it's called a minor sector. If it is more than half, then it's called a major sector. We typically use uh, ma minor sectors more often than major ones. Okay, so there's an example of a sector right here. And we could find its area, and we'll look at the formulas for them just below. A chord is just a line that goes from one point on the circle to another. And a segment is the little area that's created here. And sometimes the IB will ask you to find some of those segment areas, which is going to involve both triangle trigonometry and some of the sector area stuff. We developed some, area, or some uh, formulas for some of these areas and lengths last year in degrees, but they're actually a lot nicer in radians. So the length of an arc is given by r times theta, or theta r. The area of any sector is given by a half r squared theta, and that is true if theta is in radians. If theta is not in radians, these are actually much less elegant formulas. Those two formulas are in your formula booklets, so let's put them to use. These are examples from the book. The arc length, we're going to find the arc length in this uh, question right here. So we want to find out how big is this. Okay. It says 3 pi over 4 is the size of that angle. Um, and let's go and find it. So L is r times theta. So the radius is 8. The angle is 3 pi over 4. And you could multiply these together and call it 24 pi over 4. This is a case where the IB does want you to reduce, though, because that becomes the integer 6 pi. It would be a lot nicer if we had have just reduced as we went, and we get 6 pi. And the units, if we wanted to show them, are centimeters. We probably should, though the IB does not take off marks in mathematics for missing units. They do in other disciplines, though. The area of this sector, so how much area does this cover? <laughs> in other words, how much pizza do you get if you take that much of the whole pizza? So we've got area is a half r squared theta. Okay, so that's going to be a half by 8 squared by 3 pi over 4. And I could just work this through. That's a half times 64 times 3 pi over 4. And you can do this in as many steps as you want. A half times 64 is going to give us 32. Okay. Uh, 32 divided by 4 is going to give us 8. So in the end, we're going to get 24. The area is 24. And since it's an area, that's 24 pi, it would be in centimeters squared. So arc length is a length. Sector area is an area. So we use corresponding units. Lastly, we're asked to find the shaded area here. So this is a segment that we want to find the area of. And what's annoying is that we don't have any direct formulas for it. But if I look at this, I think there's a sector here that's all in green. If I found the sector area, so let's see, 
area of the segment, which is what we're looking for, is the sector area, area sector, minus the unfilled in part. And you can probably guess what shape that makes, minus area of the triangle. Now I'm going to erase some of these colors here because it's all getting pretty tricky. Um, let's find the area of that sector. Area of this whole sector is going to be 1 half r squared, so that's 6 squared, times theta. Okay, So again, the formula is 1 half r squared theta. It's in your formula booklet. Let's work this through. That's a half times 36 times 2 pi over 3. Okay. And so that makes 18 here. That's divisible by 3, gives us 6. So area is going to be 12 pi centimeters squared. The area of a triangle, on the other hand, area of a triangle is 1 half AB sine C. So where AB are both side lengths, in this case, they'd both be 6. They're both radii of the circle, so 6 centimeters. 1 half 6 times 6 times the sine of the included angle, which is 2 pi over 3. Okay, so that's 36 times a half makes 18. Now the sine of 2 pi over 3, let me think about that. If I had pi over 3, the point on my quarter circle, which at this point I can draw pretty easily, is root 3 over 2. What about if I were at 2 pi over 3? It would have the exact same reference angle, theta r. It would just have a different x value right, if I were to draw part of the circle. 60 degrees and 120 degrees are going to have the same sign, or in radians, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Let me just draw that in to show that we've, we're talking about this angle here of 2 pi over 3. So the sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. So the area of the triangle is 9 root 3. Now, if this is paper 2, you can just go straight to a decimal approximation. If it's paper 1, then we've got to keep it exact. Or if we just want to feel smug and superior, then we've got to keep it exact. Hmm, area of the sector, 12 pi minus 9 root 3. If we were looking for uh, an approximation of the answer here, the area of the segment, we could head to our calculator. I'm going to type in 12 pi minus 9 root 3, and I really hope that this is not a negative number. Otherwise, I've done something wrong. Hey, it's 22.1. That's great. If you're going to use the calculator, then it probably would have made some sense to just find this value as a decimal anyways, and possibly even the 12 pi. Okay, but our final answer here is 22.1 centimeters squared, combining some circle stuff and some triangle stuff. It's all trig. If it involves angles, it's trigonometry. There's some practice work that you could take a look at on page 512 to 513. Um, you don't have to do all of one. You can just do uh, number one and number four and number one, and then two to six. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.